welcome to show number three of our bedroom series. This one is about relationships. The first of many videos we're going to do about relationships. My favorite subject, relationships. And it's one of the most important ones. What is it that makes a great relationship, that keeps it going, that how do you find that perfect person if you don't have them? And are you with the right person? Are you frustrated with who you're with and the situation you're in? Should you get out? Should you stay? How can you tell? We're gonna get into all that stuff. All the stuff that you've been asking yourself and wondering about, we're gonna get into it. We have been together for five years and it has been an amazing ride. I think we're doing some things right. And we're yes. gonna share with them. And you know, just like you, you know that you're eating the right foods if you're, you know, trim and feeling good. Right. Those are great indicators. Right. The way I feel when I'm with you is a great indicator that I've been doing something right the past five years. <laughs> Relationships is a type of food. If you're eating junk food, which is like a junk relationship, you're in it for the wrong reasons. And I think that that's a big part of it is people get into relationships for the same reason they get into relationships with their food. There's junk food relationships, and then there's the good relationships. No, 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 don't get me wrong. The good ones are not necessarily boring, obviously, because we don't have a boring... Life. <laughs> right? Yeah. Don't say sex. You can't say that word. <laughs> That's not part of a real relationship, right? Anyway, uh, no, but seriously, uh, relationships are is like food. It's like diet. You can have your junk food relationships and your, and your good ones. So, um, People often get into relationships for the wrong reason. They want that quick fix. They want that feel good, that instant rush, that, and they do whatever it takes to get that, and then they pay the price. Just like junk food, you know, if, they're, if, you're, if you're in it for the, the, the quick gratification, just so you feel good for the moment, you're paying for it in the long run. So um, we're gonna show you and help you with determining what the um, choices are that you should make it's okay to have fun once in a while if you, I mean, if you want, if you're single, but if you want to make it long term, there's a few things that you should be following, a few pointers, and we're going to help you with that. I have been waiting to do this video. I've been wanting to do it. My favorite subject has always been health and relationships. And before I met you, I used to punch into YouTube search engine, health and relationships. And uh, here I am now <laughs> in it with you. Okay, so let's just jump right into it because people want the answer. So it's obviously easy for a woman to get a guy if she's somewhat attractive, but what is it that men need to know about women? What is it that... Uh, well, I think... What are women looking for in a guy? A woman has one need to feel loved. When that need is met, she is happy. I believe a man has one driving need and that's to feel respected. And when that need is met, he is happy. Well, I think some men are gonna say, yeah, well, I, I think there's another thing too. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> but when, when um, either of these needs isn't met, things get crazy. Now, Love and respect. Now, unfortunately, there is something else that women have on their priority list. And unfortunately, a lot of times it's not love. It's security. And that is, they want to be taken care of. They want to have a roof over their head. They want to make sure that they're not going to be stranded. You guys don't like needy women. They, they want know. a woman who I is know. emotionally stable, who is grounded. Exactly. exactly. And women want a man that is uh, stable. See, see, that's just it. This is so important in a relationship. You have to not need anybody. You have to be okay with yourself. You're not, like, if you feel like you're missing something, and that other person is going to fill in the blanks and make you whole, you're not ready. You're not ready for a relationship that's going to last. Anybody who is needy, who's lacking something, and thinks that other person is going to fill that lack, you're going to be draining that other person. You have to be self-sufficient, not need anybody. Low then, maintenance, happy, yeah. and, and then you interested in, in enjoying the, in the relationship together. And then you complement each other. You help each other, but you don't need the other person. That is key. That is so key that first you have to get your act together. Eat right. Be healthy. Have your, your job, your whatever it is that you need to be on your own. And then that other person comes in 
and coexist with you, but you don't get someone else to be someone who supplies you with something you don't have. That is so important. When you put something in a lot of energy into something in life, you usually get a lot out. So when you put a lot into yourself and creating this person that somebody else is going to want to be with, you know, you're creating something that's going to give you back something tenfold. Your job, and I keep saying this, is to work on yourself first. Make yourself the best you can be. Make yourself the healthiest, best looking, smartest, most self-sufficient, well-off person where you don't need somebody else. That You have to prepare. Prepare and it will come. If, if Kara and I had met each other several years earlier, we wouldn't have been ready for each other. We, we probably, it might not have worked. Even though we're perfect for each other now, we were not perfect for each other several years before that. I had to work on myself. She had to work on herself. And once we were ready, then it worked. That's the magic ingredient. Nurture it. And here's that word work, which I don't like. Relationships shouldn't be work. Right. But, um, you know, just waking up in the morning and turning to each other, emotional connecting, making that person feel happy and alive and that, that, that they're glad that they're with you. Yeah, it should come out naturally. You don't do something because you feel obligated. Right. right. Physical is very important, but being playful with each other. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, they, they do stuff because they feel, okay, I got to do something for the other person because I'm obligated to do it for the relationship. I have to do it in order. But, if, well, if you that's, should, what, right. if that's what you're doing, the relationship is doomed. If you feel like you're doing something because you have to, because it, it, it's, you know, it's for the relationship, or it's for the children, or it's for... It's, well, you're, you have to do it because you love that other person. Yeah, because it just comes naturally. It's something you want to do. It, and you don't even have to, you shouldn't even think about it. It's just something you, like, they're part of you. It's like, you feed yourself, you go to the bathroom, you, cl you clothe yourself. This person is just a part of you. You don't even think about it. It's just natural. And if it's not natural, if you're not doing it without even thinking about it, and the other person should not be uh, taking you for granted or you shouldn't take them for granted. Like they expect you to do something for them or you expect them to do something for you. And if they don't, then, oh my God, then, then there's problems because that's not, that, that's conditional love. You, you love is something that, that a, really, a successful relationship is something that happens on its own where, where you, you don't do it be, because the other person expects you to do it. And if you're, you know, this, the, people fall into a, a rut sometimes where they get into a habit of doing certain things and they start depending on the other person. And then when they don't do that, then you get angry. Like, wait a minute, you didn't make me food at three o'clock like you always do. Or you didn't make, you know, do sex or, or whatever it is, something that you expect them to do. And if they don't, that's conditional love and that, you know, it, whatever happens, you need to learn to flow with it. Right. You know, things change. The, I mean, it's, life happens. You, the things pop up where the routine gets broken up. You got to learn to adapt and flow. Adapting is key. You need to be able to adapt and not be emotionally upset if something changes today or for a week. You know, if they're not feeling well, <laughs> let it happen. Be okay with it. Don't feel like, oh, Mo, I don't, they're not there for me this week. Why talk about how miserable you are? The first thing you need to do is make the first move. Um, if your guy is out there working on his car, bring him a smoothie. Um, ask him to help you cut vegetables and talk about things. Take the first step to reconnect and um, stop bringing up old hurts. Um, if you can't stop talking about the past and how things went wrong. Yeah, are you going to live in the past or are you going to live in the now? Yeah, you may as well pack your bags. If you don't learn from the past, you're going to just keep repeating it. A lot of people, they leave somebody and get someone new and it's the same issues. It's the same problem. It's because you didn't learn, you know, and don't keep blaming the other person. You're going to keep getting the same lessons until you learn that lesson. It's easy. It's easy. Basically, it's what can I do to make this person happy? If you're with the right person, it's easy and you enjoy doing the things that make that other person happy. It shouldn't even be for them. It should be something you love to do anyway on your own. Like you guys need to find, you need to find somebody that has the same interests, the same 
Uh, not exactly. You know, you have to be close to each other, but we kind of are. <laughs> but, but um, you know, um, you need to like like the same stuff. So you may be wondering, am I with the right person? You know what? If you, you have to ask yourself that, number yeah, one. Yeah, if, if you have to ask if you're wondering. Here's a good indicator, too. Ask, ask yourself if... Would you want your daughter to be with this man? Or would you want your son to be with this a guy like the person you're with? And if the answer is no, then you're with the wrong person. I would love if I had a daughter to, be, to find a guy like you, Marcus, to be with. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of times people say, well, yeah, but I, he makes me feel so, like, he's so abusive, he's so disrespectful, he does, all he does is talk about, or he works on his car all the time, he doesn't like what I like, blah, blah, blah. Well, why are you with him? Well, he's, you know, and then they get into the, well, he makes me feel so good or he excites me or, in other words, he has something that you don't. He, he's like, he's a man and he puts you in your place, whatever, I don't know, whatever it is. But the point is that if it's because of something you don't have in yourself, then I, that's not the right reason. You, you got to just feel it. You just know. You just know. I mean, the longer you delay getting on with what you deserve, I mean, you're, every day is ticking by. Why? Don't be afraid. Don't stay with somebody because they're paying your bills and, and they're putting a roof over your head and it's all about security. And, I always said I'd rather be alone and miserable than with somebody and miserable. I mean, you were for a while there almost living out of a car and you had a son and... I just knew I wasn't ready to be with uh, the opposite sex. If I was... If I chose to at that time, I would have found a really bad guy. It's better to be alone. It's better to be alone with nobody, even if even if you're, you know, you'll always be taken care of. You'll have food. You'll have something. Uh, you, you won't die. I mean, that's the first fear is that women have is like, oh, my God, what if I'm penniless on the street? If, well, if you're with an abusive relationship, that's negative energy. And a negative energy is keeping you from having a great life. And you won't, you, you have to get rid of this one in order to get make room for the next thing there's only room for one so make room for it otherwise you're never going to get that the sooner you get on with it the sooner you make room the sooner the next the right thing can come in but you got to prepare for the right thing. and let's talk about um changing people also they won't change yeah no, I mean, they won't change and if you think that they're going to behave differently with you yeah that you can fix them oh or that you're different oh he's not going to cheat on me yeah that's not right thinking either it's that it's going to happen and um if you want to know how you'll be treated by by your man listen to what he says about his mother and watch how he treats his mom because the way he treats his mom is the way he's going to treat you and I have seen men firsthand the way they've spoken to their mother and I see them treat their girlfriends or wives the same way. And another thing is like people think, oh, I can rescue this person. I can help this person. I could save this person. Don't waste your energy. There, people generally don't change. They don't change. They stay the same. If you think that you're, you're holding out for somebody to change, you're wasting your time. They might change, but not because you're making them change. They're going to change when they're ready and they're going to do it on their own. And that Most, sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Jumping well, in already doing a bunch of work in a relationship yeah. like that. Most people don't change. Most people actually refuse to change if they're forced to change. If somebody's egging them on to change. It happens naturally when nobody's pushing them. And it just, it's just something that happens. So if you think that you can force somebody to change or you're put, there's something about pushing someone... Anything that you try to force on someone is going to make them resist even more. They're not going to want to change if you want them to change. You ever notice when you leave somebody and you say, I don't need you anymore. That's when they go, oh, wait, and then they want you. Well, it's the same thing with forcing someone or trying to have someone change. And the more you want them to change, the less they're going to change. I'm sorry, but that's why it's important to work on yourself, get yourself fixed uh, and working optimally so the other, and the other person that what's that's right for you is doing the same thing so when you meet there's no fixing there's no improving there's nothing to save there's nobody to change it's already done and that's the great relationship secret is the other person did the work they did their homework for you 
and I'm, getting involved with an abusive person, an alcoholic or drug addict, that's null and void. All this is that no, none of this will work with someone like yeah. that. You shouldn't even be with someone like so that. So the first step, this is the, the, I guess the summary of this video. The first step is in order to get the right person, you got to work on yourself first. You've got to work on yourself first. Read Heal Yourself 101. Read the, the Structures for a New Life. Get yourself so good and perfect and on your own. Trust me, if you do that, you're going to attract someone to you that's doing the same thing. And here's a tip for men. Okay, this is what women want. I've met a few men in my life that have been so nice and sweet. But... There was no challenge. I, I, they were just too nice. Um, like this guy said, I like your shoes. Where'd you get them from? And I said, the men's department and Target. I mean, it was obviously, you know, he was just going out of his way to be too nice. When actually, you know, women are a little like men in the sense that they like a little challenge too. They don't want a guy fawning over them. And I've noticed in the past, um, w for women, when I show no interest in a man that has showed interest in me, his interest peaks double, triple. Um, it's when women are fawning over a man as well. The man is like, oh, I don't really, you know, there's yeah. not much of a challenge here for me. That's what I, that's what I mean. When you it's, say, I don't need you, then people, then they want. Oh yeah. Right. yeah. And, and in that sense also, it's kind of, it's sad. That it's kind of like a game, you know, you can't be, if you really like this person, you kind of got to hold back because well, you don't want to scare that person see, off. See, and there, this is how you get to this point. If you are self-sufficient, if you don't need anybody else, you've already got that attitude that I don't need you, you know, right. and that's kind of attractive. It's kind of attractive to other people. Anybody who tries too hard, eh, there's something weird about that. Like you said, yeah, so hold back. So what is the most sexy thing that women say they like about a man? Confidence. Yeah. Where do you get confidence? You get it from having your act together where you don't need anybody. That's sexy. And it's the same thing with a woman. Yeah, sex and body and all that stuff. Women are more visual. Right. But, but women. when a woman says, I don't need you, there's something, I got to have her. There's something like, you know. Uh, you need to conquer that. Yeah. So being good looking and healthy and sexy and all that, that, that's a given. Okay. Obviously, you should do that anyway. Eat right, you'll look sexy. Given. But the attitude of... I'm on my own. I've got my act together. I don't need you. That's uh, that's somehow attractive. Now, that doesn't mean that when you're together, like her and me, that you're like, eh, I don't have to deal with her today. I don't need her. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm just saying that you're not going out of your way to having to be somebody you're not. You're not trying hard to be, you know, you're just like sometimes she would disappear for most of the day. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't feel like, oh, I miss her, so I need her. I, I feel like I'm lacking something. You know, sometimes we hardly see each other. We can come and go all day. Sorry. When we are together, that's great. And when we're not together, that's, that's fine. I mean, we, we're self-sufficient. And so. as far as um, sex goes, when you first meet someone, I've always had a rule where I just make them wait. Because I had a girlfriend in high school that um, slept with a neighbor of mine and they were all at my house the next day. And my girlfriend was disgusted by this guy that she had slept with earlier. And I'm like, I, I, this, the relationships was new to me at this point, okay? I, I never had a boyfriend until I was 20 years old. So I'm just learning this and gathering and watching and being fascinated by the way the, the, the behavior between two people. And she said, oh my God, she starts sneezing. And she says, I think I'm allergic to you because she was highly allergic to cats and he had cat dander on him. And I just thought that was so funny. She said, can you like just get out of here? And I'm watching these two, mainly her thinking, I can't believe she slept with him 
three days ago and now she's disgusted with him. Hmm, how did that happen? Well, as I got older, I realized that we do not know who this person is in 24 hours. It takes time, weeks, months sometimes. And I just don't want to make a, 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 have that regret that, oh man, why did I, I sleep with that guy? I don't like him. He's a terrible human being. So I suggest waiting as long as possible, at least a couple months. Um, I think that's very important for women. And as far as men go, they're not going to dump you. They're going to yeah. be more on the chase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to be more interested in you. Now, some of these people might say, okay, okay, well, I'm, I'm with a person. I think it's going to work. So what, what are the tricks and secrets to making this work? So that'll be the next video. All right. So there we go. There is our, uh, our first, first of at least three main videos about relationships. So, you want more? Be sure to subscribe right here at the big red button. Click the bell button so you're notified when the video comes out. And subscribe to this channel. Comment, like, tell your friends about it, especially those who need relationship help. Um, MarcusNews.com is my newsletter. And uh, you got our Facebook links and everything else. Anyway, so stay tuned. Coming up real soon in a few days will be the next part of our bedroom series on relationships. Stay tuned.